guys and welcome back to another video. Today I am going to be doing a review for the Talon series by Julie Kagawa. Talon is a five book series about dragons. Uh, so these dragons survive by pretending to be humans. Essentially there is a huge organization called Talon that protects all of the dragons including their hatchlings. Then they have the hatchlings train up to act like humans and then after a while said hatchlings need to go and live in the human world for a while so that they can experience what it's like to be human without really being human and we follow two hatchlings ember and dante ember being our protagonist and they go to live in california now the anomaly between ember and dante is that hatchlings normally come from one egg one dragon, one egg, no siblings, but Ember and Dante are twins because they are hatchlings. They were hatched at the same time, two different eggs, I imagine, but hatched at the same time, which makes it unusual. Um, we also get the perspective of Garrett. Garrett is a knight of St. George. The knight of St. George, you guessed it. They hunt dragons. They are amongst the few human beings that know of the existence of dragons and are trying to wipe out dragons for the safety of humanity. And the final perspective that we get is Riley. Riley is a rogue dragon. Rogue dragons are basically ones that have rejected the organization Talon and are in fact hunted down by said organization. Can you see where I'm going with this? Rogue dragon, Knight of St. George, girl dragon yeah no no one it's a love triangle Shh. spoilers anyway i really enjoyed this series it was incredibly cheesy it was very very predictable it was such fun it was a brilliant light relief i had been reading a lot of very serious adult high fantasy at the time and reading talon was exactly what i needed when i needed it I had read Mistborn, I had been listening to Malazan, and before that I had read The Witcher. So I had read a lot of adult fantasy back to back to back. And then just listening to Talon and having a great time just relaxing and being able to predict stuff and literally just having fun with it was a brilliant experience for me. Uh, the love triangle was ridiculous but also amazing. I got really invested in it. I am Tim Garrett but Riley is also adorable and in the second book onwards you also get Dante's perspective. Dante being the protagonist Ember's brother. <sighs> There's so much to unpack here. All right, I, I'm going to try and keep this spoiler free because I don't think that this series is hugely popular. I know there will probably be some of you who have read it or have started reading it, but the series isn't like a Mistborn, Lord of the Rings, Wheel of Time, everyone and their mother has read it, Folk of the Air, Court of Thorns and Roses. Like there is a larger portion of people that haven't read it than that have read it. So that being said, I'm going to try and keep this as spoiler free as possible. I'm going to do this in my usual sections. So the first thing I'd like to talk about are the characters. The characters are hugely over-dramatized in the best way possible. They're kind of like they've just dropped out of a soap opera. They are so angsty and so over the top. The voices that they use on the audiobook are so telling because they're so angsty. Um, Ember is this confused dragon who like doesn't fully support the way that Talon controls everyone, Talon being the major organization of dragons, um, d doesn't really support the way that Talon controls everyone, but still avid believer in Talon's existence. Alongside her brother, who is very, very devoutly Talon supportive. And then she's being swayed by devout Talon brother, rogue dragon Riley who is completely against everything that Talon stands for and is trying to enlighten her and why Talon is evil and why major corporations are evil and then you have Knight of St George that she doesn't know is a Knight of St George and all of that and then you've got Garrett being like I don't know she's the dragon I'm supposed to kill I'm not sure because she's got a brother and dragons aren't supposed to have siblings etc 
a lot of confusion going on there. However, there wasn't a single character out of the lot that I disliked. I I really enjoyed like even all of the side characters. You get a couple of other rogue dragons. You get a British guy that's helping uh, Riley out. He's a hacker. He's really cool. Further down the line, you get Jade, who is fantastic. Um, I liked um, Gareth's best friend, Anthony. He's pretty cool too. He's a sniper. I, I, even though everyone is really, really highly strong and really angsty and really predictable, I really enjoyed all of the characters. At no point was I like, nah, this book could have done without them. I liked the way they were written, but I don't know how much of that is just the mood that I was in at the time. So my glowing review of this might literally just be because, oh my God, thank God, I finally got to read some YA after reading so much adult fantasy. But I would definitely highly recommend this series regardless because the characters are fun. The plot. The plot is incredibly predictable. Again, as I said, from the introduction alone, just knowing that you have a Knight of St. George, a dragon and a rogue dragon, and one of them being female and two males, you know there's going to be a love triangle. It's pretty obvious. Um, it Every single step of the way, you could predict basically what the entire next book was going to be about. So if you are looking for something that's going to be fresh and surprising and new, do not pick up this series because it is not hugely novel. It is just purely entertaining. Um, that being said, I don't actually feel like the book was trying to be anything other than some fun entertainment and the concept of the way that dragons are shifting into humans all the time. The fact you have actual dragon protagonists but they're in human form so they're not um you just don't have a massive dragon lolloping around throughout the entire book but you're still seeing it from the point of view of a dragon and the way that they perceive themselves as different from humans all very interesting um, but it's not hugely novel. So bear that in mind when picking up the book. The next thing that I would like to talk about is the writing style. The writing style is incredibly simplistic. I did not read this book physically, so I do not know how it would come across physically, but the audio book was, the writing style is, it's no Shakespeare, let's be honest. But again, in this story, it would be very strange if you had fancy, fanciful, really flowery, metaphorical writing. It wouldn't suit this type of story at all. The style of writing perfectly suits the series. Now, given my, pre my previous recommendations and previous dislikes of books, it might seem odd the way that I am giving such a high praised review of a series like Talon, given that I actually only gave um, Mistborn three stars. So I gave Mistborn three stars, I gave the Talon series three stars. And yeah, I'm talking better about Talon than I was about Mistborn. And that is entirely down to the fact that when I am talking about a series, it's also based on my expectations. So for example, with Mistborn, A, it was an adult fantasy series, which is much more my preferred genre, while Talon is a YA series, which I predominantly use as a reprieve from said adult fantasy, meaning that my expectations going into each book are going to be hugely different. Also, I am aware that within YA, I am no longer the target audience. I prefer reading adult fantasy. For Mistborn, I am the target audience. For Talon, me 10 years ago was the target audience. So the, the juvenile in me very much appreciated Talon. The adult in me thought it was really cheesy and fun. So my change of tone in terms of me talking so positively about Talon and relatively negatively about Mistborn stems not from my enjoying Talon more because it is superior literature but because it delivered what I expected it to and Miss Bourne failed to live up to what I wanted it to do. So before you at me with like how can you give Talon the same as you gave Miss Bourne? They're not the same even though it's the same racing because one I was expecting to not like it at all once I found out it was a love triangle in it to having a fun time with it and the other I was expecting to be like a new favourite and it was just okay. 
Um, yes, if you are looking for a light reprieve, a bit of easy fun, then I would highly recommend picking up Talon on um, Amazon Discover, like Discover Stories at the moment, the entire Talon series is free. I don't know how long that will last, but as of recording this, it is currently free to listen to the entire series. So if you just fancy listening to something while you're, you know, you're busy and you don't want to have to concentrate a lot on your audiobook, then I would definitely recommend it. It's it's a lot of fun. It's very angsty. It's very, it's, it's the epitome of YA. It's everything that everyone assumes is going to be the cliche of YA. And yet I still really enjoyed it. <sighs> Okay, well, that is all from me for today. Let me know in the comments down below if you have read this series or are interested at all in picking it up. And also what you think of my differing forms of writing and reviewing series, depending on my expectations as opposed to on what the actual book delivered. And yeah, while you're down there, if you could give this video a thumbs up, that would be very much appreciated. Subscribe if you want to and hit that bell icon if you want to get notified every time I post a new video. Goodbye, everyone.